In our foundation, we want to cross over. Pastor Tanti, Mabenge, uh, we are crossing over together with you now. Let us cross over, my pastor. Yes, and take us through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Mama Gatebza. Thank you for allowing me to be in this platform this morning. I'd like to greet the 5 a.m. gang as well and say, God bless you. God bless you. Happy Sabbath, everybody. It's been a long week, but it's also been a very good week. Um, I have been equally blessed by all uh, the morning prayers. Um, every time we come here on this platform, uh, when I finish speaking, I would uh, switch off so that I can join my wife on her Zoom and uh, we would get into the prayer groups and so forth. And it's been quite a blessing. And I think uh, as a family, we've resolved that um, we are going to use this platform uh, to, to, to do our morning devotions as well. Um, but only this time I don't have to get up and uh, look good for the screen. I will also be joining you from bed from now on. Um, I know uh, Dr. Litsedi is going to be taking us through from tomorrow, and I know we are going to be blessed. Um, I urge you to continue um, on this platform because um, it is a very good place and uh, good things are being done here. And uh, people are testifying here, which shows that our God is still in control and he's very much aware of our troubles and he's sorting them out. It's good to hear what God has done for another person so that it can encourage you to wait for your turn as well as your turn is coming. And uh, may we be blessed. We're really looking forward to those messages that are going to be coming from tomorrow from Dr. Litsey De Strait, uh, for, as the president of the School of the Prophets in Helderberg. Uh, thank you very much. Um, this morning, let us go back again to our pericope in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 until 41. And um, today is the last verse of our pericope, but we'll read it again from the be beginning. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious quail came up and waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, teacher, do you not care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the winds, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, and let it be so until he comes. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I think other versions will say, what manner of man is this, that even the seas and the waves, they obey him. And um, I'd like to take our minds back to the day when all of this was happening so that we can realize what sort of people were witnessing what was happening in front of them. These are people that were growing up in an environment that had um, Roman rulership over them and had Greek mythology that was over them as well. These were people that were not really religious, but at the same time, they knew they had to do what needed to be done for them to pass by. As fishermen, they knew you can never travel at sea without appeasing the gods of the sea. And because of that, they were aware that there was a god called Poseidon. Poseidon is a Greek god. And I think the Romans referred to him as Pointus. This was a Greek god that was supposed to be appeased by giving an offering at the sea or any kind of waters where you were going to sail before you actually set off. 
so that you can have good weather and you can travel safely. This was also part of the routine, or it would have been for a lot of the fishermen that were going around in Galilee. The storms would rage in Galilee now and again because it was 600 feet below sea level. And because of that, there were strong winds that would come through. So they had to uh, appease the god of the seas, Poseidon, each time they were going to sail. But the Bible says when Jesus comes through to the disciples, he didn't give them a chance to prepare for the journey. They took him as he was meaning that there was no appease that was done for Poseidon. There was nothing that was done to make sure that they have good sailing. And because of that, the storm that came could have been accrued by the disciples to the fact that we did not do what we were supposed to do before we started off. Now, this God was not only working by himself, because if you were going to have bad weather at sea, from Poseidon, there were chances that Thanatos, who is the god of death, was going to visit you as well. That is why they come and they say, Master, care us not that we are drowning. Others say, care us not that we are perishing, meaning that the threat, the threat of Thanatos, who is the Greek god of death, was also knocking at their door. But now, if you are taken by Thanatos, it meant that Hades was not far along. Hades is the Greek god as well that keeps the souls. He is the most feared and the most hated of all the Greek gods because the issue with him is that no matter how much you appease Hades, but Hades will not give your people back after he has trapped their souls. Even the Romans had a name for him, which was Pluto. They knew that Pluto does not play. He takes your loved ones and he traps them in, and you will not be able to free them from there. That is why the Bible talks about the victory of hate. It says in the last days, we will be asking death, where is thy sting? Hate, where is your victory? Because hate, for all the ages, no matter how much the people appeased him, but he would not let go of their loved ones. People would try giving gifts to hate. They would try doing everything. But unlike Poseidon, who they could appease and they could have bad weather, hate would have none of it. If he takes your loved ones and he traps them, then that's it. You will never experience them again. Therefore, Hades was seen as this one that had a gate that was very welcoming. But as soon as you get through those gates, he shuts the door and he says, you are not allowed to leave. And no matter how much you can cry out, Hades keeps you locked in. But over all these gods, over Poseidon, over Thanatos, over Hades, there was also Zeus. Now Zeus, was the overall acting god of the Greeks. He was called Jupiter by the Jupiter. Zeus was in charge of the weather. He was in charge of the skies. Zeus is the man that would bring lightning. He's the man that would bring strong winds. He's the man that would make things terrible for you. And he was all powerful and revered. And even other gods feared him for he was the most powerful. Now, here in the sea, you have these disciples that are on this boat that have a sleeping Jesus. And all of a sudden they see that Poseidon is angry with them because he has not appeased them. And he makes this vuru vuru vai, if you can call it that way, inside of Galilee and everyone is fearful because they know it is a point of no turning back 
and the new hate was lurking around with Thanatos, his cousin, saying that as soon as you are capsized, as soon as you fall over, we are going to take you in and trap you inside so that you are unable to escape. And as they look to the skies, to the one that is supposed to speak to the other gods so that he can let them go, they find that Zeus, the one that is all powerful, has joined in in the force and they are all fighting against them so that they can capsize their boat and make sure that their story is finished. But when they wake the master, when they wake the one that is their teacher, when they wake the one that always had a solution to their problems, he does not come with the way that teaches them how to get out of the situation. But in his sleepiness, in his sleepiness, in his still voice, he says with one word, peace, be still, and all the gods are destroyed at once. Hate, Thanatos, Poseidon, everyone has to fall under his direction, including Zeus himself, how would you feel? The ones that you feared the most, Jesus stands up with one word, he gives an order and they all break down. How would you feel? Would you not be in fear as well when you realize that the one you were laughing with, the one you were talking with, the one you were joking around with, hey, he is not just a mere human, because if he's able to command Zeus, command Poseidon, command Hades, command Thanatos, then it means that this is not just merely a human being, but this is a powerful deity, for he must be superior to these gods if with one voice they listen to him. Brothers and sisters, when I was growing up and I was in high school, I used to be a fighter. I used to love fighting a lot. And we had one simple rule. If I beat you, then it means that everyone that you have ever beaten also is subjected to my power. There is no one that can come and challenge me that was once beaten by you because I've already beat you. So the logic was that if I'm able to defeat you and beat you, then all those that you have beaten have also already been beaten by me. Therefore, the rule was simple, very simple, that we have these levels of respect, levels of respect. If I beat you, then you also know I've already been beaten, even though we never had a fight, even though there was never anything that happened with us. But the mere fact that I beat the one that was more powerful than you, it means that I'm more powerful than you as well and I've beaten you. And here what we are seeing is the realization by the disciples that if we are scared of Thanatos, if we are scared of Hades, if we are scared of Poseidon, if we are scared of Zeus, then how much more should we be scared of the one that is able to stand and tell them to be still? And and I'd like to say, I don't blame the disciples for being scared. I don't blame the disciples for the fact that they backed down as soon as they saw Jesus talking to the storm and quietening it down. They were filled with fear inside of them because they suddenly wondered what manner of man must be this if all of the ones that we fear, he's able to command them with his voice. But brothers and sisters, allow me to take you again to a different scenario where the disciples were standing, gazing up unto the sky because Jesus had been taken up in the cloud and the angels come and they say, hey, men of Galilee, why are you standing staring at this Jesus? And the reason why is because the angels did not understand what was going through the disciples because that feeling of being scared was replaced with the feeling of protection knowing that this one that was more powerful than every other God was able to protect them. He was their friend. He was their loved one. He was on their side. 
and therefore they had nothing to fear. The reason why they were staring, gazing up in the sky is because for the very first time, when they say their prayers, they will be saying them to the one that shared their hunger, to the one that shared their poverty, to the one that shared their suffering, and also to the one that shared death with them, but also resurrected on the first day of the week. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to say to you, the angels did not know, but this was a new epoch for the disciples, for they used to say prayers to the unknown God, but first time ever, they were going to say prayers, knowing that there is somebody up in the skies that is just like them. You see now, when we cry and we say, God, we are hungry, we are assured that God knows our hunger because he hungered for 40 days in the wilderness whilst he was still on this earth. When we turn to him and we say, God, these people do not want me. They have rejected me. We are turning to a God that understands the situation of rejected because he was rejected by his own brothers and sisters. When we turn around and we say, Lord, we have nothing. We have no home. We are talking to a God that knows the experience of not having a dwelling. And he is on our side. That is why Paul says, do we not have a high priest that is in touch with our infirmities? Yes, brothers and sisters, we have a high priest that knows our suffering. When we come to him saying we are hungry, he already knows the feeling. Oh, what a mighty feeling that it is when you replace the feeling of fear with the feeling of love because you know the one that is most powerful is on your side. It is, was a very nice feeling at high school to ride around with the big boys, knowing that no one could touch you because they loved you. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, so that whosoever believeth in him, he shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, this morning, I'd like to say we have a friend in Jesus, even though he's powerful, even though he can subject all known gods under his supplication, even though he could steal demons, even though he could tell Satan to get away from him, even though he was able to quell all types of sicknesses, including death itself when he called Lazarus out, yet he is still our friend. He is on our side. He's the one that holds our hand. Oh, we have a mighty friend in Jesus, one we can call upon. When things become too much, we've got the big brother that we know has got the power to save us from our situations. When things go bad, when things look sour, when we know we need somebody, we know we have a big brother that we can call on them so that he can sort them out. That man is Jesus. Hey, the book of Acts says there is no other name given amongst men by which we must be saved except for for the name of Jesus, 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 how sweet the name, Jesus, Jesus, the one that is able to save his people, Jesus, Jesus, our representation, Jesus, Jesus, our supplication, there is none other, he's the alpha, he's the omega, he's the God that is on our side, hey, if then God is with us, who can stand against us? Brothers and sisters, I'd like to say this morning, there's no need to fear the demons. There's no need to fear the witch doctors. There's no need to fear the omens that they've created against you. For the one that is your friend, the one that is on your side, he's able to command with his voice and everything comes to his supplication. He says to us, no weapon, from the gates you shall prosper. Therefore we walk around kicking everything, saying that the earth belongs to the Lord and everything that is in it. Stay away from us, devil. It doesn't matter what you have because our God can defeat you even waking up from his sleep. Who is this man? His name is Jesus, a God that was with us a God that came for the disenfranchised, a God that is able to save us from our sins. And I'd like to say this morning, 
We have nothing to fear for Jesus is on our side. We need not fear him because he loves us. Each time the devil comes our way, we can just stand through like a very cheeky child, look at him straight in the face and say so, because we know, we know that God so loved the world. Brothers and sisters, today, we have nothing to fear. On this very day of the Sabbath, we know on this day that was put as rest, not just to ponder upon God as the creator God, but also to ponder upon the fact that there will come a time when all these things of this world will come to an end because Michael shall stand and he shall say, it is finished. And the former things would have gone past and we will go into a new dispensation. And I'd like to say, don't wait for that time for you to enter into the dispensation. Walk in that dispensation today, saying that you have a big brother on your side. You have one that is able to defeat everything. He is your friend today, and his name is Jesus. I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters today, we need not fear him. He, Paul says, therefore you can boldly approach the throne of glory, knowing that we have a high priest that was just like us, but yet he was found without sin. He was tested like us, but he was found without sin. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you this morning that we have no reason to fear. The disciples feared because they saw their biggest opponents being defeated. Wouldn't you be scared? But at the same time, think about this. The one that is most powerful, he is saying, I want to be your friend. He is inviting you to share with him in his power so that you too can be in his kingdom. What a feeling that we know, what a glory divine that Jesus is our portion as well. We need not fear, but we can boldly approach him with anything and everything that is in us. And he will be able to take care of it so that we can stand up on strength. COVID may come, serious situations of this world may come, but one thing that we do know, we have a big brother that is on our side. And I'd like to speak to somebody today that thinks it's over for them because they have lost a loved one, that think it's over for them because they've lost a parent, that think it's over because they've lost a child, think it's over because their marriage is going haywire, think it's over because there's a great storm that is happening in their lives. And I'd like to say to you, Big Brother is with you and is watching. And if those things are happening under his watch, you better rest assured that everything is gonna be sorted out and taken care of. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to say to you today that even death itself, it doesn't become a full stop. It becomes a corner, a coma, because Jesus is on our side, because a day will come when he will resurrect us from the grave. That day we will even be laughing at our most feared adversary, Hades, and saying, where is your victory, Hades? Hades, where is your victory? We will be laughing at the devil saying, devil, come now. Come now, what you gonna do? Cause we know big brother is on our side. And I'd like to say, don't wait till the end to get into that victory. Celebrate that victory today for it is your portion. I'd like to say to you brothers and sisters, what a sweet feeling to walk with them, to talk with them and to share your life with him so that you can know when you come to him, you know stranger, but you're coming to somebody that you already have a relationship with him. This man is Jesus and is on your side and he's able to defeat all things that are known to man. Yes, the undertakers may take us today and put us under the earth, but the upper taker, Jesus himself, he will come and pop us out of those graves like popcorn in a hot in hot oil on a stove. We will leave again because Jesus is on our side. Brothers and sisters, I urge you this morning, let us not give attention to the winds and the storms, but let us give attention to the one that is able to command them so that they can be free from our lives. Let us pray. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the promise of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gift 
of Jesus hanging up on Calvary. Thank you, Father, that his blood is powerful and is able to wash and cleanse our sins away. Thank you, Father, that because he is our portion, we are able to command the demons of the devil. We are able, Father, to speak openly about him without fear. Lord, even if the devil can be angry, even if he can attack our families, attack me, attack everything that I am doing, attack even my life, yet I will still hold on to Jesus. For I know he, the devil, will just be making a last run because my Jesus is still coming soon. As my big brother, he will speak on my behalf. I know Job said that I know my Redeemer lives. And today, Lord, I'd like to adopt those words and say that we know that you live as our Redeemer and one day you will speak on our behalf and justice will be carried out. Therefore, we say today, devil, bring on your, your best fight, but nothing will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for everything you've done. We worship you for who you are. We worship you for the things, Lord, that you prevented that might have consumed us. We worship you, Father, because we know even amidst our trials, you are still God and you are still able to carry us through. Let us rejoice, Father, not in answered prayer, but rejoice in prayers that are able to reach you because you are a God that is close to us. We know it's a privilege for us to come close to you because all other powers, Father, they do not allow anyone to come close to them, but you as the most powerful, you say, just close your eyes, and I'll be right there next to you. Thank you, Father, for this privilege. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.